listening to the Prevailing Faith Broadcast, a podcast in Christ, with Pastor Charles E. Brown of the Prevailing Faith Bible Church in Monroe, Louisiana. Now, here's your host, Pastor Brown. Well, good evening. God bless you, each and every one of you, for tuning in. We want to give a big shout out to you. We appreciate what you're doing is working. You've been sharing. You've been downloading. Your comments are very encouraging, and we appreciate that. We appreciate those of you that's been willing to be a part of this. Now, remember, I know some of you are listening on Facebook and YouTube. If you would like to chat with me live, you have to go to the Spreaker um Spreaker website and uh, put in prevailing faith and give them uh, your email so they can so then you can chat with me because I love to hear from you. Uh, and, and I think it makes it more intriguing when I have others that come in and just sit sit for a while and share something that they believe the Lord is telling them to say. So as we go before the Father in prayer. So let's welcome the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. O most precious and gracious Father, we count it an honor and a privilege that we're welcome into the courts of heaven. And we come again, once again, to yield our spirit, soul, and body to you. To say the word of truth that we've accepted Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. And it's our endeavor and our, our privilege before you is to share your word as you reveal it to us. For, Father, you promise us. You said the words of the righteous shall feed many. So, Father, we yield our mouth to you, that our mouth will speak your word in such a way that it will reach the hearts of men and women all over the world, that it will transform lives and it will drive them right back to you. And, Father, we recognize that the word of God is the absolute truth. And Lord God, we come as we open up your holy, precious, written word, inviting you by the power of God in the glorious name of Jesus to guide us as I will speak your truths and honor your word in the matchless, supernatural name of Jesus. We say amen. Well, praise the Lord. I thank y'all for joining us. As you can see, tonight's message, I'm still in the intimacy series. My help. I took it from Psalms 101 verse 2. But let me remind you, the word intimacy is a very special word. It represents a closeness uh, uh, where you know the person, you know them well, and you have a deep relationship with them. And but see, the word intimacy can apply to your relationship with God. You can be very intimate with God because he's living big on the inside of you. You can be very intimate with your parents, your grandparents, your friends, your neighbors, and so forth and et cetera. But we're working on the intimacy between a husband and a wife because a husband and a wife. Now, remember, I, I say this because I'm not trying to hurt your feelings. But I made my decision, I'm going to believe the Bible. I suggest you do it too, but it's your choice. I can't make you and God won't make you. But it, and I want to tell it to you the way the Bible tells it to us. Because I'm talking from over 40 years of experience of being married, over 30 years of being in right standing with God. And what I'm sharing with you is what the Word of God, the Spirit of God, did for my wife and I in our marriage. It made it grow. It made it blossom. It turned into a whole supernatural vehicle. And this is my desire for you. And so that's where I'm coming from. I don't want to put you down. You know, uh, that's a bad habit of saying you know. <coughs> Excuse me. We had the opportunity on last Wednesday to marry a young couple at the school. They asked me if they could come. Um, they, they got their license and they want to know if, if they could. I said, well, look, just come out of school. We'll go ahead and take care of it. 
And uh, I'm giving you a short version. The big version is this. They had planned a big, illustrious wedding, and they had a beautiful site. Everything was beautiful. They were sitting on rolling hills in this exquisite place. But there was something they were missing. I never asked them what it was for their marriage license. So they asked if I would still perform the ceremony. I said, yes, I'll marry you. You'll be married spiritually. But then we'll take another day um, in the week when you get the license and we'll marry you legally. Yeah, because I perform a spiritual marriage, which is more binding than a, a legal state marriage. But in recognition, in the state laws, you do have to have a license. So don't, make, don't misunderstand what I'm saying. You do need a license. But they came to me and said, look, we'll marry you spiritually, and then we'll do it uh, for the state um, uh, next week when you get the license. And so they called me, and they said, we got the license. We're ready to do it. And I said, okay, no problem. I said, do you mind if we invite the school to do it? And they said, of course. Yes, we love it. So it was cute. We had the pre-K and the kindergartens come down, and they made little flowers, and they threw that out. And we had some of the kids to walk down to be the maid of, maid of honor and matron of honor and stuff like that. And um, I was talking to the kids. I said, we're going to have a wedding tonight. And, and a couple of them told me, says, you know, you don't have to do all that. And I'm like, why are you saying that? Because I realized they never saw this example in their homes. Their mothers are not married or, and they're not presently married. And, they're, and, and I thank God they had the children, but they did not honor what God says about marriage. And so this is my attempt to share with you what God's word has did to me in our marriage. Because Proverbs 18 and 22, he says, Whosoever findeth a wife findeth a good thing and obtaineth the favor, the goodwill, the acceptance of God. It is God's way that a, a, a single God-fearing man and a single God-fearing woman come together in holy matrimony. And he says, this will have my favor upon you. And I, 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 I know you never cared about it, but I do care about having the favor of God. It has given me supernatural strength to keep moving forward. And then in Proverbs 19, verse 14, where we were last week, he says, house and riches are the inheritance of fathers. In other words, the son can get house and riches from his father because a father is supposed to leave son an inheritance. And a prudent wife is from the Lord. And so he's telling us, you should believe God for a spouse. You should believe for one that is prudent. And the word prudent means wise, prosperous, has a great understanding for what needs to be done in a marriage, who's considerate, who, who has skill, able to teach, to give special attention, to have insight. You need all this in a marriage because a marriage is a team. But God calls you one. And so when you have come together as a married team, God has his way with you and he gets to do what he wants to do from the beginning. He wants to bless your marriage. Isn't that amazing? God wants to bless your marriage. Is God in your marriage? He's in mine. What about you? And so uh, I got this title today because we'll go back and forth through the scriptures. Because you can be very intimate with a person, but the only one that you can be sexually intimate to is somebody you've taken the time and you married. That's who God says, because you can have sex without marriage and God calls that fornication. And you can have sex outside of your marriage and he calls that adultery. Those two things are out the will of God. Well, I don't believe it. That's your choice. I'm just going by what he says. He says to do it that way, and I chose to believe that way. And that's why I stand on, I stand on my marriage and our relationship that I'm going to honor my marriage. I, I put respect on God's word and upon what God, on my marriage. Now, look at Psalms 101, verse 1, New International Revised Version. Listen to what he says. 
He says, I look up to the hills. Where does my help come from? Because that's what I'm asking you. Because <laughs> this is where God gave it to me. You know, here you are. God, you told me he will find a wife, finds a good thing. And you said I should find a prudent wife. But I did everything you told me, but it's not working. I feel just like Adam did. That woman you gave me, God. You know, because you see it in Genesis 2 and 18. Um, God says it's not good for man to be alone. I have made a command companion or a helper for him who corresponds with to him. But then when Adam and Eve got in trouble, Adam turned on his wife. <laughs> he said, in Genesis 3 and 12, he said, Lord, that woman you gave me. <laughs> That woman whom you gave me, she gave me some fruit from the tree and I ate it. Because, see, God wants you to hold yourselves accountable. Because in the scripture, what it's saying to me, when you look at verse 2, my help, if God is the one that's created marriage, if God called you and your spouse together, if God was there and he ordained for y'all to come together in holy matrimony, you called an elder or a, a, a minister of the gospel to oversee over your wedding. So when your marriage gets into trouble, because remember I said it before, I'll say it again. The devil's going to fight you tooth and nails to keep you from getting married. And soon as you sign them papers, <laughs> he's going to come to try and destroy your marriage. Because one of the things that tickled me about that couple was they were so caught up and nervous about um, before they got married. But they told me, said, this marriage, the second marriage was easy. Why? Because all the pressure's off. They know they're married. They know they're married spiritually. They're just doing the legal part. But they knew that they were married. That's why the second marriage was easier. All the pressures from before was alleviated. But he says, my help. So this is what I'm asking you through the word of God. Who are you going to for help in your marriage? He says, my help comes from the Lord. Is that your truth? Because who made the heaven and earth? You got to get this in a certain way. Because remember, marriage is made in heaven. And to keep it, you're going to need heaven's help. And heaven only goes by what the word of God says. You know, I know there are a lot of people that for whatever reason, they don't make it. But God wants you to make it. And I believe you can make it. Well, I've been married 50 times. Well, if you did it right, now you're with God. We believe you can go on from there. But the word help means one who helps or one who knows how to help. One who gives or provides what is necessary. That's the point I believe God is trying to make. He is necessary in your marriage to make it work. And, be, and listen, listen, listen to what? See, God's on the line because he's the one that told you to marry her. He's the told you the one to um, join together with her in holy matrimony. So he's on the line and he says, well, come to me. I'm going to show you how to make it work. Don't do it without me. Yeah, we sing that song sometimes. Whatever you're doing in this season, huh? Bishop Martin, Lord, don't do it without me. Well, Lord, you call me to marriage. Well, why would you think you don't need his help to keep the marriage or for it to be an effervescent flow? Because when you get help, he says it's to satisfy a need. You need God in your marriage. You need God's strength. He says that's what he does. He says my help comes from the Lord. He's saying he will contribute his strength. His means to accomplish what needs to be accomplished in a marriage. He will render you supernatural assistance that you can make it through this thing called marriage. He's willing to assist you. And you know, another definition for the word help is 
He will rescue you. Yes, Lord. Takes me back to 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10. I think I'll read it. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10. Because I need you to hear what God's telling you. Because you don't need to know this. Who delivered us from so great death and doeth deliver in whom we trust that we will yet, and I'm sorry, let me say it slow, in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. He's telling you, one translation says, I'm going to keep delivering you. If you get in trouble, go to God. He said, I'm going to get you out of it. You get into conflicts and situations you can't figure out, go to God. He said, I'm going to take care of it. I'm going to lead you through this. Because that word helps mean he will facilitate. He will facilitate what you need to prolong or enlong or engage or your marriage to succeed. He's willing to assist you. But you got to take the time and bring him into your marriage. You got to be willing to say, Lord, I'm going to do it your way because your way is perfect. Because, you know, one of the things that God always reminds me a lot of times that um, that your words have significant power. Your words can do things like you never imagined. And that's why he gave us Proverbs 15 and 1. He says, he's talking to married couples. If he want me to do it to somebody I don't know, he certainly want me to do it to the woman and woman that I'm married to. He says, a soft answer will turn away wrath. But harsh words will stir up anger. He's giving you a secret. You got to learn how to talk to each other. You got to learn to wait on God before you open your big fat mouth. Because if you say what you're thinking or you say what you're feeling, you're going to have to eat them words or you have to ask to repent. And then sometimes you can say things to your to your spouse and they don't let it go. They can even walk away. But he's telling you a soft answer will turn away wrath. You can stop the confusion and division and strife by the way you talk to each other. Uh, That's what the word said. Listen, I have to do it because I got I got feelings. (laughs) I think some type of way. But see, I know how the word works because I made a mistake. She told me to put it in the oven. I put it in the toaster oven. I added to it. So I messed up her breakfast. And I know she didn't like it. I apologize. But I could tell God is working. Because she didn't go off on me. But I clearly messed it up. (laughs) Well, how'd you make it up? Because I saw a car was empty. I went and filled that baby up. And I go fill it up again and again. Because I messed up. I said I was sorry. But you know, we just want you to do what's right. We don't want to hear no sorries. But he says, a soft answer will turn away wrath, but harsh words will stir up anger. Because look what he says in verse 2, Proverbs 15 and 2. The tongue of the wise, is your tongue a, a tongue of the wise? Uses knowledge, uses knowledge rightly, but the mouth of fools pours forth foolishness. He's telling you, use your tongue wisely. Use what you say to edify or bring blessings to the situation. Use what you say that it'll bring the power and the grace of God in there. Because one of these things, as you're married, you're going to have to deal with different things. Like I said before, Big things you have a way of coming together. But it's the, them little foxes. Oh my God. That's what Song of Solomon said. That little foxes that'll destroy a marriage. It's the little things. The jokes that are not funny. Um, the disrespect to one another. Those are the things that can cause a whole lot of problems in your marriage. 
But God says the tongue of the wise uses knowledge rightly. The words that you say to each other, do they bring about the wisdom and the caring of God or do they entice arguments? <clears throat> do they put you in a position where instead of y'all growing, you're being torn apart? Been there, done that. Been there where my words hurt the situation. <laughs> instead of me adding, uh, stopping the problem, I caused the problem. I know I'm the only one that's done stupid stuff. Complete English version says that first scripture, Proverbs 15 and 1. A sensitive answer. Yes, Lord. That's powerful. Turns back wrath. That's what you want to do. But an offensive word stirs up anger. Do your words, when you speak to each other, are they words of in, of, of righteousness or are they words that stir up anger? That's a powerful word. Complete Jewish version says it like, a gentle response deflects fury, but harsh word makes temper rise. Been there, done that, wrote the book about it, had to throw it away because it wasn't worth reading. That's an expression. Because he's trying to get us to understand. Good news translation. A general answer quiets anger. A gentle answer. But a harsh one was stirred up. See, I got this from my mother. I, and then God helped me see where she was coming. My mother never liked to argue. And, um, and her siblings wouldn't know it because she was a baby sister, but she loved to serve. When they, when they would come, they lived out of state and or whatever, my mother would get up and just serve them. She cooked the whole meal. She would, um, she would bake all the pastries because she did it as an honor to all of her siblings. And some of them took advantage of her and some of them could push her. But she did it as an honor. And I find out the Bible telling me I need to do this to my, my wife. If I'm going to do it for anybody, I'm going to do it for my wife. I'm working on being nice to you. I'm working, but I gotta make sure I do it at home. Cause you won't hell at home, have a hot wife in there. And I'm not talking about physically hot. I'm talking about angry. The message translation. A gentle response. Is that you? Diffuses anger. But a sharp tongue kindles a temper fire. I love what that man said on Steve Harvey's talk show. They had been married for over 50 years, and Steve Harvey asked him what was the secret. I can either be right or I can be happy. I choose to be happy. You don't have to say everything that comes to your little mind because it's probably wrong anyway. <laughs> Set off World War 10 million and five. He says, a gentle answer, this is New Living Translation, deflects, repels anger, but harsh words makes tempers flare. I don't want to speak harsh to my wife. I want to be able to cuddle with her. I want her to embrace her. I want to be able to come into her presence, and, and she wants me and I want her. I mean, listen, I'm not trying to tell you every day is a day at the beach, because sometimes even at the beach, the storms come, the winds blow. But we got to remember what we're there for. We are there to honor God the Father, honor God the Son, honor the King of Kings. And this is the way God is telling me to use it. Verse 2, the tongue of the wise useth knowledge of right, but the mouth of fools poureth out foolishness. Let's listen at a couple of different translations. The complete Jewish version says this. The tongue of the wise pre presents knowledge well, but the mouth of, fool, of a fool spews out folly. Is that what you want? Okay, maybe you like the complete English version. 
The tongue of the wise enhances knowledge, but the mouth of a fool gushes with stupidity. The words you're saying in your marriage, do they bring about revelation? Do they bring about love? Do they bring about kindness? Do they bring about the will and the purposes of God? Or what you're saying has brought about division and strife. God's word translation says it like this. Proverbs 15 and 2. The tongues of wise people give good expression to knowledge, but the mouth of fools pour out a flood of stupidity. Let me ask you this. Do you ever get tired of being stupid? How do you know you're stupid? Because you keep saying stupid things. Message translation, 15 and 2, Proverbs. Knowledge flows like a spring water from the wise. Fools are, fools are a leaky faucet, dripping nonsense. I don't want to drip. If I say something, I want it to count. What about you? You know, because I, I get these dumb jokes. I got one today. I thought it was funny. Said, what do you call a priest if it comes a lawyer? Father-in-law. <laughs> I thought that was cute. I get them every day. New Living Translation. The tongue of the wise makes knowledge appealing. But the mouth of a fool belches out foolishness. Are you a fool? Then don't talk like one. Because I always go back to this. When David was in severe trouble in 1 Samuel 30 and 6, when, when the enemy had kidnapped his whole family, his wives were gone, his children were gone, and even the people who he had led them to victory and all kind of money and wealth, but their family was gone too. They turned on him. But this is what God is saying to me. You got to be able to encourage yourself, but you also need to be able to encourage others. This is that famous statement from 1 Samuel 30 and 6. And David was greatly distressed. Been there, done that. For the people spake of stoning him, the people he helped and cared about, because the soul of all the people was grieved and every man for his sons and, and for his daughters. But David, listen what he said, David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. How did he get that strength? How did he become strong in a difficult situation? Because he went to God and he spoke the word. He went to God and he spoke the word and he believed the word. He went to God, he spoke the word, he believed the word, he acted on the word. He went to God, he spoke the word, he believed God, he acted on the word, and he waited on the word to manifest. Because if David encouraged himself, why can't we also encourage our spouse? It's been a little over two years now when my mother in love, my wife's mother, was going through tremendous health concerns. Her body was having all kind of adversities. And I remember she and I standing outside. We was dropping off a vehicle to be repaired. And we both stood outside and I stood, she was in the vehicle, and we had a cry. It was a just touching moment. I was there for her. Little did I know in a few months she's going to be crying for me because my mother transitioned. But I know they with the Lord, but it was still hard. But look, the title of the message. In Psalms 101, verse 2. My help. My support. What can repair the situation and not tear it down? It comes from the Lord. How you know? Because he's the maker of heaven and earth. I can depend on him. Because look what he says in verse 3. He will not allow 
your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. He's telling you, you don't have to be all night worried about your marriage. Put it in the hands of God. He says, I never sleep. I never slumber. He said, I'm your protector. I'm always awake. Your century version says, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, you got to pray for me. I'm in this Louisiana weather with all these sinus challenges. But by his faith, I'm breathing well and I'm healed in Jesus' name. Good news translation says verse 3 like this. He will not let you fail. Your protector is always awake. God is awake. So why should you be up all night worrying about your marriage? No, we're going to, I'm going to speak encouragement, sweetheart. I'm here for you. There's anything I can say and do for you. Let me know. I'm praying about what God wants me to say and do because I want to honor our marriage. I want to be a blessing to you. I want to be there for you because God, God created this. And so I have to keep going to God to get God's assistance, get his help, get his support. And listen, he never sleeps, so he knows what I should do when I should do it. Verse 4, behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. And look what he says in verse 5, the Lord is your keeper. Is that who's keeping your marriage? Oh, that's you. <laughs> The Lord is your shade at your right hand. God saying, I am your keeper. So why not go back to the manufacturer? Because <laughs> um, I remember in the car business, man, when a car was under warranty, all the people would come in, well, look, you got to fix this. I hear a squeak, pull a dash, I do this. But it always tickle me. When a vehicle got old or out of warranty, they didn't hear those those squeaks anymore because they had to pay to get them fixed. But God's telling you, I gave you this gift of marriage. You the one that bumped into bumped into uh, Mary. You the Adam, and just like Adam and Eve, there was only one woman for Adam and, and Adam was the only man for Eve. And God says, I put you together and I'm the one that can keep you together, but I can't do it unless you come to me and I'll help you. And you need to recognize, God, I need your help, especially in my marriage. I need your assistance, Father. And he says, the Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. God, you cover me. I love it when God covers my marriage. He says, cover me, Lord God, because I need your covering. I need it. And see, you can convert this prayer to cover your marriage. He says in verse 6, the sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. Nothing going down without God helping you. Verse 7, and the Lord shall preserve you from all evil. Wow. Hear what he's saying? He says, I protected you from all evil. But you see, I, now this is Old Testament. That's why I got to go to New Testament. Look at Luke chapter 10. Because I got to remind you of this because you can forget this. Luke 10 and 19 because I listen to people. Luke 10 and 19. This is what he says. Behold, I give you. Now in the Old Testament, he says, I'm going to protect you. But he says, I'm giving you the power or authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over some. No, he says, over all the power of the enemy. You have been given the authority to stop the enemy that's coming against you in your marriage. That's what he's saying. Behold, I give unto you power or authority to tread down serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And look what he says. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nothing shall end my marriage. We shall live a long, satisfied life. We shall have a long, satisfied marriage because our marriage is totally, completely de dedicated and committed to God. He's telling you, you have the authority. To use that name, what's that name? Jesus. 
the name that is above every name. He says, in Psalms, it says, the law will, shall preserve you from all evil. But in the New Testament, he said, I gave you the authority. Matthew 18, he says, what you bound on earth will be bound in heaven. What you loose on earth be loose in heaven. I always go back. Let me see it. Let me, let me see it. Because I, I have to remind myself why I got to get along with my spouse. Matthew 18. This is what reminds me why I got to keep getting, I got to get along with my spouse. Because if nobody else agrees with me, I need her to, because we in this together. I prosper, she prospers. I get promoted, she gets promoted. I get blessed, she gets blessed. But Matthew 18 and 19, again, I say unto you, he's talking to you, boo-boo, that if two of you, He's talking to a husband and wife. Shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask. Oh God, I need my prayers answered. I got time to be praying games. Talking bad to you, saying bad words to my wife. They shall ask if they, sh if it, look what he says. It shall be done for them of my father, which is in heaven. God telling us. That I got authority over the devil. He's telling us, my wife and I, that we can have whatever we agree on. Lord, we agree on a brand new house, debt free. We agreed on every bill is paid, that our children are healthy, wealthy, and wise, that our seeds are mighty upon this earth. And Lord God, that we'll live a long, satisfied life together, that we walk in the power and authority. He says, whatever we touch and agree on. And then look what he says in verse 20. And there, and where two, oh, come on now, I'm getting excited. And where there are two or three gathered together in my name, they are in the midst of them. God is in the midst of my marriage because our wife and I both agree. We agree together in the name of Jesus. I'm getting excited. What about you? Because God's telling me he's in my marriage. We go back to Psalm 121. He says, Verse 5, the Lord is my keeper, glory to God. The Lord is my shade at my right hand. Thank you, Father. The sun, sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. In other words, he got me. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. Verse 7, he shall preserve your soul. God, you keep in my marriage, and I am so eternally grateful. I'm so thankful, God, I can depend on you because you're the one that has kept my marriage all these years. And Lord, I'm thankful that you're not ready for it to end. You're ready to keep us going. And verse 8, the Lord shall preserve your going out. Yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. I can preach that. He says the Lord shall press, preserve your going out and your coming in. Lord, that's where I need you. I need you to protect me, Lord, when I go out. I need you, Lord, to cover me when I come back in. Why? Because me and my wife, we gonna have the we have the glory of God in our lives, in our marriage. We're doing it God's special, glorious way. Isn't that amazing? That God wants to help you. That's right. He wants to help little old you. And you know what I'm gonna do? I'm going to let him. Lord, I come to you because I need your help. I need your supernatural assistance. Because he says, he says in Good News Translation, verse 8, Psalms 121, verse 8, he will protect you as you come and go now and forever. Lord, we talk about eternity. That's right. We're talking about walking in the eternal glory of God while we're here upon this earth. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Message translation. He guards you when you leave and when you return. He guards you now. He guards you always. That's what I want. I want you to guard me. Guard my spouse in me. Let me say it correctly. Guard my marriage. Guard my children. Oh, yes, I want my children protected, my grandchildren protected. 
Because why? I'm saying, thus saith the Lord. I'm living, thus saith the Lord. So God can be honored in my marriage. I'm telling you what he did for my marriage. I'm telling you because he's saying he can accomplish it. He is the creator. He's the one I go to. Because that's what he's trying to get us to hear. Before you go off and say something, you got to beg her and buy flowers. <laughs> you know, when you send uh, flowers to the job unexpectedly, it's not a birthday, not an anniversary. What did he do wrong? <laughs> what did you catch him doing wrong? No, I want to give her flowers any and every day. I want to give her the flower, the power of the word of God. New Living says, the Lord keeps watch over you and your spouse as you come and go both now and forever. Yes, Lord, now and forever. And we are together until death do us part. And I thank you, death will not come for a very long, long time. I saw this lady, the oldest living person died Yesterday, 119. Well, praise the Lord. I'm going to get my 120. At least I'm going to go after. What about you? Because if you would take the time and use this word to believe it to do what it'll do, it will change your marriage. You, you give those soft answers. You give praise to her. You compliment her. You tell her how much you love her, how much you appreciate her. Okay, I hear you, Lord. I got to work on it more on my end. Maybe I've not been saying it enough. But I'm going to work on it, Father. I'm going to tell her. Because um, I remember uh, I was telling somebody, I said, tell your parents you love them. Tell them. And I know that they love their parent. And, and they would tell me, well, I know they love me. I said, I know, but you need to say it. You need to make sure they hear it from you. And as the parent got elderly, I would hear this person say it to the parent. And I would remember because it's important. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. If I keep telling my wife, I love you, I love you. You know, it, it takes me back to the scripture in uh, 1 Corinthians 12, where it says that you cannot say, um, let me see if I can find it. You cannot say a negative word about Jesus if you're a believer. I got it. It's 1 Corinthians 12 and 3. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calling Jesus a curse. I think nothing about cursing Jesus, nothing at all. And that no man can say that Jesus is Lord but by the Holy Ghost. And because I have made the decision to accept Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior, it would grieve me to try and call Jesus a curse. I'm not going to do that. It's not even in my vocabulary because I have been born again and I won't stay that way. What about you? But Mark 9 and 23, listen, I'm just telling you, these are keys to make your marriage work. Because I say this all the time, and it reminds me of that. That my wife and I have a long, loving relationship. I love her, she loves me. Whatever her desires, she has. Exceedingly, abundantly above all. But Mark 9 and 23 says, Jesus said to him, If you can believe, yes, Lord, I can believe. All things are possible then to him who believes. Lord, I believe your word can make my marriage what you said it could be. I believe your word can uh, train me, guide me, that I give a soft answer to my wife. I believe your word can guide me on how to say words that will enhance, encourage our relationship. Why? Because that's what I tell people. I said, you want to know the love of God? Take the time to read the book of John. He gives you insight to how much he loves you. You want to know how to Talk to God, read the book of Psalms. Because i that's a lot of times I pick up different scriptures in my messages. 
because today is what the 25th day of uh of this month so five times 25 is 125 so i read 121st songs to 125th songs and then proverbs is where you get your wisdom so i read the 25th chapter proverbs so this is what a lot of times i pick up because this will help you but you got to read it in light of the new testament but this will help you know how to talk to God because God wants to hear from you and he loves to hear you speak his word. He loves for you to believe his word because that's what we ministered on yesterday. Every time you believe the word of God, it moves the hand of God and the miraculous, supernatural, authoritative power of God shows up on your behalf, because you believe God. That takes me back to Acts chapter 27, verse 25. Those powerful words that Apostle Paul said, when the boat was falling apart, and he says, take, therefore take heart, men, for I believe God. Yes, powerful words. I believe God, that it will be just as he told me. Glory to God. It's going to be just like he told me. I have help from God with my marriage because my help comes from the Lord. I have the wisdom of God to say his word at the right time. Because I'm telling you, when you say what God says, I always think about this guy that worked for me many years ago. And I would paraphrase what I was saying because I knew he couldn't take the scriptures. And he let me know it was working because he told me, he said, please don't tell me that. Because what you're telling me, I'll be thinking about it all night. And I had to back off because I didn't tell him I was speaking to him from the Bible. I would paraphrase it because I was trying to get to his heart. I was trying to minister to him that he would go to God and come to find out he was an alcoholic. And he was running from God. And those words that I spoke will remind him of what God promised him. Because remember, there's no word, nothing more powerful than the word of God. And, and Isaiah says, the word of God shall not be returned void. When the word of God has been spoken and believed, it shall come to pass. I'm getting ready to run right now. Praise the Lord. It shall come to pass. Every debt is paid. Every, every, bind, every situation is released. By his stripes, I'm healed. I walk in his authority. Wealth and riches are in my house <laughs> because I love the Lord and I love his word. I love his word so much I keep saying it. Why do you keep saying it? Because I believe it. And because I love it, I believe it, I keep saying it, it shall come to pass. Just as he told me. He says I'm healed. My days of being sick are over. Well, your body doesn't know that. Well, that's all right. I'm going to keep talking to it to catch on. Yeah. Wealth and riches are in my house. Where you got that from? Psalms 112, verse 3. He said, wealth and riches are in my house. He said nothing about I had to have the money in the bank because banks close. <laughs> I got a little stock in the bank and it goes up and down, but it's, it's way ahead of what I invested in, but I watch it. But God's word always goes goes out and fulfill what he says. He says, for I believe God that it shall be just as he told me. This is why we take the time to say, thus saith the Lord. This is why we take the time to include God in what we're saying. Because God says, I'll help you. When nobody else will. Glory to God. When nobody else will come, he will come for you. When nobody else can do what you do. Come on, now let's be real. There's some things that's been going in your marriage and in your life. You don't want nobody to know. You don't even want to know it, but you do know it. So you're going to God and say, God, I need your help. I need you to show up like you do. Like the Bible says, you show up immediately. You show up immediately because right now, Father, I need immediate supernatural 
relief. I need you to step in and give me the divine purpose and direction. Give me the strategy, oh God. To put my marriage back together. To bring my children under the fold. That my children will marry the right person. That my son will marry a prudent wife. And my daughter is a prudent right, prudent wife to her husband. That I have offspring. My seed. My seed. Shall be mine upon this earth. God says I will help. I will come. I will be there for me. We talking about the creator of the universe. Why would you waste your time reading a thousand ways to make your husband jealous or 10,000 ways to keep your man happy? All that junk. No, I'm going to trust this glorious, magnificent word. Yes, Lord. That was here before I got here. That will be here long after I'm gone. That it will be, that is eternal. My God, my God, my God. His word is eternal. And I turn loose his word and his spirit in my marriage. That my marriage will grow and prosper like never before. Why? I need your help, Father. And you said, if I call, you come. That's what you told me in Psalm 91. God is my refuge. God is my help, a very present help in a time of trouble. Yes. Lord, my marriage needs your help. Well, I thought you were happily married. I'm very happily married, but I can't, I can use room for more help. <laughs> Cause we still got more days to go on this earth. I don't know what the enemy is going to try and do. We got to be ready. <laughs> we got to be ready. Cause he says, I will come for you. I will help you. I will keep you. I will protect you. I'll preserve you from all evil. I preserve you and I gave you authority to use my holy, righteous word. And that's what we're doing, amen? He says, and I believe God. Lord, I believe you still got more to do with my marriage. You got more to do with my children's marriage. You got more to do in my children's children's marriage. So, Father, we just come and honor you. Because you told us in John 8 and verse 31. Then Jesus said to those Jews which believed on him. Is that you? If you continue. Yes, Lord. Oh, my God. If you continue in my word. Then you shall be my disciples indeed. Lord, I'm committing myself to continue in your glorious, magnificent, unlimited, supernatural word. I'm committing myself to do it your way, Father. And Lord, wherever you want me to go, I'm willing to go. Whatever you want me to give up, I give up because I'm committed to you. I recognize you know far more than I do. But Lord, you said you'll help me. So Lord, I believe your help. My help comes from the Lord. I believe I can depend on your word. Woo! Glory to God. I can depend on your word to show up on my behalf. And Lord God, I can depend on you because we got major things that are in face before us. And we need God's strategy. Supernatural wisdom. Because we're trying to change a whole nation. We're trying to save a generation. And that's going to take the word of God, the wisdom of God, the spirit of God, and willing vessels. Because he told us in Luke, he says, the harvest is plenty, but the labors are few. There are people all over the world that need salvation. And God needs some willing workers to go out there and win the loss. And so... I want to remind you what the Bible says in Big John 3 and verse 7. He says, marvel not, you must be born again. Now, God's way, he says, I made it possible that you can be born again. That means you're born to this earth, but God's going to born, you're going to be, be reborn in your inner man, in your spirit where God lives in the hearts of believers. 
but you have to invite him. God will not come in unless you invite him. But if you, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to pray a prayer based on Romans 10 verse 9, that you're going to invite God into your heart. And then you're going to be known to God forevermore that you are born again, that you are a child of the living God. So I need you to bow your heads, close your eyes, and think about what Jesus did on your behalf. And repeat after me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe God the Father sent you to this earth for me. Upon this earth, you were beaten, you were cursed, and you went to the cross for me. You were beaten beyond human recognition for me. You died on the cross for me. But God the Father raised you up from the grave on the third day. And you're now seated at the right hand of the Father. And now, Lord Jesus, I count an honor and a privilege that I might invite you into my heart. And as I receive you, Lord Jesus, now according to your precious word, I am now a born again believer. I'm a child of the living God. I belong to God. Well, praise the Lord, glory to God. We thank you for coming in and joining the kingdom of God. And remember, God loves you so much. And the Bible says he rejoiced when you come in. Now, listen, if you just said that prayer for the first time or you or you were backslidden and you just rededicated your life back to the Lord, we have a book for you that you can call me or text me at 318-215-6399, your information, and we'll send you the book. Or you can uh, email me at pastor at prevailingministries.com and then Facebook, Facebook, you can inbox me and we'll quickly respond. But now there's a second part of the prayer is based on 1 John 1 and 9. Because you're human and you're still subject to making mistakes, God put a provision in his scriptures that you don't have to pay for your sins. But you have to ask him to forgive you. And that's what he says in 1 Corinthians, I'm sorry, 1 John 1 and 9, that if you ask him to forgive you, he's faithful and just to forgive you. So let's pray this prayer with me. Repeat after me. Say, Father God, you promised me that if I ask you to forgive me of anything I've done against you, my fellow man, or even myself, You're faithful and just to forgive me. So by faith, in the mighty name of Jesus, I'm truly, completely forgiven in Jesus' name. Now remember, God has forgiven you, but you still may have to pay in the natural for what you did. And that's why you go to God and say, God, you've forgiven me. Now you show me how I can make amends. And he'll stand with you. He will help you. Now there's a third part. This is your part. If you're not a part of a local ministry, it's God's way. He said, I sent pastors after my own heart. There is a God-loving, God-fearing ministry available to you somewhere. Ask God to lead you to the place where you can grow in the love of God and the knowledge of God so you can grow up and be the man and woman of God he called you to be. So we'd love to hear from you. We'd love to know if this has been a blessing to you. Once again, we appreciate you downloading and sharing with us. And we we love your encouraging words, your thumbs up. We thank you for that. We also remind you, we are on Holy Spirit Broadcast Network 24-7. You can see Prevailing Faith Ministries or Dr. Charles E. Brown, and you can find my information. You can hear messages that we've left left there. We're also on Four More Radio, 8 p.m. Monday through Friday. Tune in to Four More Radio, 24-hour gospel music, praise the Lord, led by Dr. Loria Moore and and, um, overseer Jackie Evans. God bless them tremendously. And then we also, you can go back and see our messages on 
uh, Facebook, which uh, live Wednesdays, and we re- we pre-record on Sundays. And then each Wednesday, I'm sorry, each Tuesday at high noon, we have high noon prayer. And so tomorrow at high noon, we go, we're going to go live praying for the needs of the community, praying for praying for peace and and. Uh, in Europe, praying for peace all over this land, that the hearts of men would turn towards God. So we encourage you, if you'd like to be a part of that, look for us, find us. We'd love to have you. We appreciate your time. And remember, walk by faith, not by sight. We love you with the love of the Lord. I'll be back next week, Monday at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. Remember to download, share with others, and invite others to be a part of what God has called us to do. Praise the Lord. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Amen. Pastor Brown and Prevailing Faith Ministries want to thank you for tuning in and welcome you to email your questions, comments, and prayer requests to pastor at prevailingministries.com. Once again, This has been another episode of the Prevailing Faith Broadcast with your host, Pastor Charles E. Brown, who reminds you to walk by faith, not by sight. And God bless you.